Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Niamtu, lovethatface.com, and this video is for our patients, uh, and it explains uh, drains and how we use them, if we use them for facelift surgery. When you do facelift surgery, you're separating the skin from the deep tissues, much as my, my pocket here is separated from the other material. And during healing, you get blood settling in there, and you get blood products such as serum and uh, other, other liquids that happen during healing. And some patients do really well, their body absorbs this and they heal uneventfully, but other patients it can really cause irritation and can cause in some patients, if, if you don't remove that fluid, it can cause kind of a washboard effect where you get these ridges in your neck and they're temporary, but they can persist for weeks and um, patients don't like that and they're cumbersome. So by using drains, we're, it allows us to remove this healing fluid and these drains may stay in overnight or they may stay in a couple days. And it basically accelerates your healing. It gives you uh, faster healing. It gives you less bruising. And it makes the facelift experience better. The drains don't hurt. The patients don't feel them. They don't know that they're there. And it doesn't hurt at all when we take them out. So in this video, we're going to show you how to care for and use a drain. And not every facelift patient will have a drain. Once in a while, we use little what we call vents, which is just a gravity drain, and we have another video for that. But if you have the bulb drain uh, with your facelift, we're gonna talk about how to take care of that. So this is called a Jackson Pratt drain, and the area that I'm holding between my fingers has a bunch of little holes in it. And these, this will go in uh, around the patient's neck where we do the facelift, and this part will protrude at the hairline, and then the drain, if, if we can zoom out here. So this part of the drain will be coming out uh, in the hairline. And uh, there's, a, there's a tube on here. This tube, you can, you can put it in your pocket. You can, there's a little loop. You can put it around your belt. Uh, or you can uh, tape it to your blouse. It's, it, it's not a problem. And again, this doesn't hurt. Patient really doesn't know it's there. And we're going to go close up again. And I'm going to show you how to work this drain. So the way this drain works, this little bulb, you squeeze the bulb and there is a little tab and you seal that port. And when you release this, that's going to make a light suction or vacuum. And that's going to suction the blood and the uh, blood products up through this drain and it's going to collect inside the bulb. Now, when you open this up, you can see that there's little markings on here and that is milliliters, so 25, 50, 75, 100. The average patient probably has somewhere um, between 50 and 75 uh, ml on the first day of surgery and then a decreasing amount after that. So after a while, after this is plugged, the suction, uh, the drain will expand and there'll be no more suction. So what we ask the patient to do is to uh, measure what's in there and then they reactivate the bulb. You squeeze the bulb, you put the plug back in, and you let it go. That's all you need to do. And we'll do this, you know, sometimes the bulb may uh, um, stay active for several hours, and sometimes you may need to activate it a couple times an hour. Um, at the beginning, there may be air under the skin, and so the bulb will expand and lose its vacuum, and then you have to activate it again by squeezing it. Now, uh, from time to time, there'll be a leak in the system and, and it, it simply won't work. And in cases like that, uh, you can just plug the drain and, and call our office and we'll give you instructions on what to do. And again, generally, we'll leave this drain in anywhere from one to four days. And uh, although it seems a little bit cumbersome, it's really a minor situation and it truly does help healing and bruising. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, drain maintenance. So we've already explained what the drain does. And uh, if these get clotted or stuck, they, they don't work and they're of no use. So there are a couple things that you want to do. Number one, you want to make sure always that it's compressed and in charge so there's active suction. And sometimes you'll get a little clot in here so you can just wiggle this. And sometimes you need to just take this. This is very stretchy and you hold it between your thumbs so you're not pulling uh, on the skin and just stretch it back and forth on the length of the drain. And 
when you get up towards the anchor point on the patient there, then you want to make sure you're just not pulling so you don't pull it out. And the drain is in place, you can see it. So how long do we leave these in? Well, sometimes we leave them in one day, sometimes we leave them in four days. It really depends how much drainage you're getting out of it, but <clears throat> everything that you get out of this is something that doesn't stay in the neck, and it just makes the healing easier, less bruising, and uh, a better result faster. So what we're gonna do is remove uh, the drain. It, this particular drain has been in four days, and we leave them in uh, anywhere from you know one to five days. And so we've already cut the little suture here that was retaining it, and it's very simple. You just take it out, and the patient will not feel that. And that's how we remove a drain. Here is the portion uh, that was in the patient there. And um, so we don't need to do anything. That's the last hole of the incision, and that will heal up spontaneously. So uh, removing it is quite simple. So facelift surgery is my passion and I have the greatest staff in the world, and we're available 24-7 to help you. Every single patient has my cell phone number and that of my nurses, so if you have any questions about your drain, give us a holler and we'll get you straight. I'm Dr. Joe Niamh, to lovethatface.com.